Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. So today's another, well, I guess call it discussion piece. Um, it's just something that I've just been noticing as well. Uh, watching a lot of, you know, again, some other YouTubers and just seeing some people, what they're posting online on, on like Twitter and stuff like that. And that is the ongoing hunt of like trying to find retro games. Now, well... You can say video games, you can say retro games, either one. I know there's a lot of people that are, are really into some of the more modern stuff. And, you know, as, as the generations change, some of the stuff that, you know, I still consider new is now old. And, uh, you know, people are still looking for that stuff too. Uh, even if you go to, like, something like GameCube um, or PlayStation 3 or something like that, you know, a lot of these games, they did exist quite a while ago, and now they're out in the wild, and people are trying to hunt them down. Um, but I'm thinking, like, you know, obviously for me, I'm, I'm a little bit more of an older uh, style of uh, game player. I like this, you know, you know, I like the Atari stuff, I like the Intellivision, and ColecoVision, and all that other stuff. And when I started to, I'd say, like, you know, I was not necessarily hunting it was just something that i always kind of kept in the back of my mind like hey if i'm uh, if i'm in a strip mall and there was a um like a thrift shop i would just run in there and be like you know let's look around see if i could find some old stuff and this would have been probably in the ooh, 90s i would think the 1990s um when i would go into like thrift shops and i would hunt around and i found like old atari games for like 99 cents nobody cared about them they would just be on the shelf sitting there um you know i i found like mario brothers and um like a few other like for like 99 cents because and and you know they would literally you know those little wax pencils they would just write on the the cartridge like 99 cents or something like that and i would buy them i'd often often just you know bring them home maybe even clean off the 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 whatever they wrote on or there'd be like a sticker or something and, you know, there you go. I'd have this, uh, you know, this Atari game. Now, at that time, it wasn't necessarily, like, for me collecting. It's just I wanted the games. I wanted to play them. I mean, this was a time when emulation wasn't really too big yet. Um, like, there was some compilation discs, like CDs that started popping out at some point. Um, in my last video, I showed off the Atari... Um, uh, well, it's this one here, actually. The, the Activision Classics. Um... And I remember getting this, uh, this is the PlayStation one, but I had it also for the PC, probably running Windows 95. I bet you I still have the disc somewhere. Um, and then I ended up getting it for PlayStation later on. But uh, anyways, yeah, so, you know, finding these old games was always a, a chore. You'd have to, you'd have to go and you'd have to look. And uh, at that time, a lot of these games, it wasn't, you know, I, I think a lot of people just forgot about it. Um, at the time, it was um, Sega and Nintendo those were the two big ones so you either were buying genesis sega genesis games nintendo super nintendo um so things like atari and in television and all that were just nobody cared um and and i would always find them and not just them but all old computers too i mean commodore 64 stuff i i would find you know like games like people would just leave discs and and um joysticks for it and uh you know, even the computer, I I ended up picking up a uh, VIC-20 at uh, at a thrift shop. And it was just just sitting there on the on the, the shelf. And I'd be like, oh, cool, VIC-20, I always wanted one of these. Um, I, you know, I still have it, but it, it doesn't work, unfortunately. But, um, you know, that's a, that's a story for another day. Uh, but anyways, I just remember always being able to find this stuff. In television, the, the Intellivision that I have, um, it's kind of a Frankenstein of two Intellivisions. One was... Um, uh, one I, I picked up off of, uh, from, uh, you know, one of those little uh, magazines where people would advertise, you know, way before we had Kijiji, um, it, it was called Penny Saver, and you would, people would just post their articles for sale, and I remember reading through one, and someone was selling it in television, in a box, and, and uh, it said they had it at their cottage, um, they don't care about it, and, and uh, that all the games with it and stuff, and I jumped on the chance, I'm like, yes, and in television because uh, I, I wanted one again. I wanted to have another in television. And so I, um, I I called them and I, you know, it was like 40 bucks or something. It was pretty cheap. 
and I ended up with a box and television with all these games. And I'm like, this is awesome. And, and of course, you know, my girlfriend at the time didn't know what the hell it was, but that's okay. Um, I was, I was in my glory. Um, and then, um, eventually I found another one in a thrift shop. Um, it was just kind of like sitting there again. It was just sitting on, on the, one of those, you know, those big, uh, metal, what do you call them? Bookcase thingies. They would just be sitting there and nobody would care. And so I'd, I'd grabbed it and I'd be like, Hey, you know, a Commodore, uh, a, sorry, an Intellivision. And it had like a $5 price tag on it. I'm like, are you kidding me? Five bucks? Hey, yeah. So, so I took it home and I, I ended up Frankensteining the two together to make one good in television because the, you know, controllers and stuff like that. But anyways, you know, that, that, that was just how I always did it. I would just wander into thrift shops. But it seems like today that's not the case anymore. You just can't do it. Um, and I, I think that, um, you know, a lot of thrift shops, they've become wise. They, they have the internets now. You know, they can go on the Googles and they can look it up and they can say, hey, you know, this uh, this old Atari system, uh, somebody will pay good money for it. And then they end up shoving it in those showcases um, where you have to bid on it. And, and who knows how much you're going to pay, right? And um, and that's if it, even if it reaches that point, right? And the same thing with the games. People now, it's like, okay, the, they think that these things are treasures. They think that these things are expensive. Um, I, I kind of talked about this on, on another video where I went to a, a, like the Fan Expo in Toronto and I saw a couple of Atari games there. They were commons, like they were basic. I think it was like Pac-Man. Um, and it was like, they wanted $15, $20 for, for Pac-Man. And I'm like, you know, that that's barely even five bucks in my book. Um, so yeah, like chasing them down at thrift shops almost became, uh, you know, not happening anymore. Uh, the last few times I've been in thrift shops, the only thing I could ever find are games like NHL, 2003 or something like that you know all the the disc games there's no more cartridge games you don't find those you just find the disc games and most of them are sports uh you get the, like the wii sports games and the the uh you know some of those games that required that little board you had to stand on you know a, a lot of stuff that nobody wants nobody will ever want that's all you ever really find and of course there's also garage sales um i was never a big garage sale person if one was happening on my street, I might go and check it out, but I just can't, I could never bring myself to be the garage sale guy who, you know, drives around on a Saturday morning looking for people's, you know, sales and then rummaging through their stuff. Um, but, you know, you can probably find a lot of great treasures doing that. And one of the little tips that I learned um, from watching uh, some other YouTubers doing that is to always ask them, do you have old video games? Because sometimes they... They'll, they'll have video games, but it'll just be like uh, Wii, Nintendo Wii stuff. Uh, because it's the, the last one they remember buying. It's probably what was st sitting there right in front of their TV. They don't play it anymore. Maybe the kids moved out, whatever. Uh, they throw it out there in a garage sale. But if you ask them, hey, do you have any old video games like Atari? They might be like, oh, yeah, we had one of those uh, like 30-something years ago. It's in the basement. Hold on. I could probably go get it. That's where you get the old video game stuff. That's where you get the retro from. Um, but, uh, you know, again, that's that's part of the hunt, and you have to have that drive. I just don't have it. I can't... I, I thought about doing it a couple times, you know, doing the whole driving around, going to houses, uh, you know, thrifting through people's junk. But I just, did, I just don't have it in me. Um, and then the other way uh, to do it is to go to actual, like, flea markets. Um, flea markets are okay. Unfortunately, it kind of runs into the same problem you ran into with the thrift shop. Um, <clears throat> but some, some flea markets, you might find a booth or, or a place where they don't know what they have. Um, for instance, I got this diner here. This is a pretty rare Intellivision cartridge. Um, as you can see, I, they still have the sticker on there. Um, I think she charge, yeah, $5 for this. This is worth way more than 5 bucks. So I got lucky on this one. I mean, I did get lucky on this one. But I remember buying from that same booth, I bought an Atari game that they overpriced that I didn't notice at the time. It was like, you know, when I really started to get back into wanting to buy some uh, video games, um, I ended up paying like 25 bucks for like a common. So I lost money. I, I, I gained money. Um, but then there was another booth that opened up at some point and they had a, somebody who just came in and just sold a whole tub of games. I mean, just 
uh, tub of, I, I walked in and she showed me and I looked at that tub of games and my eyes just, and I'm like, I want to dig through that tub really bad. And she's like, have at it. And so, and, and I knew she was one of those people that didn't really price things to, you know, overprice. She was always fair with her pricing and, and oftentimes she underpriced everything. So I dug through there and I found games like Mr. Dew's Castle, uh, which at the time I didn't even know what it was, but I didn't recognize it, so I grabbed it. Um, Frogger 2, you know, these are some rare cartridges, right? Um, Miner 2049er Part 2. Um, all these, like, Atari cartridges, I've never seen them, and I'm just like, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. And I think she ended up charging me, like, three bucks per cartridge. Um, and I was like, okay, whatever. I, I had, like, a big stack of cartridges. I paid, a, you know, maybe 25, 30 bucks. I can't remember. This is going back a few years. And um, I went home and I, I was just like, curious about these. I started doing some research and I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I absolutely underpaid for these. But I was okay with that because I'm like, I'm not buying these to flip them and sell them. And in fact, she had two copies of Mr. Dew's Castle and I only took one. Um, and so when I realized that this was worth quite a bit of money, I went back to her and I said, hey, that cartridge you have there, that's worth more than $3. Do you want me to sell it for you? And she's like, cool, you know? And so I did that. I, I put it on eBay, um, sold it for closer to what it's worth, the value, and then gave her the money, and she ended up giving half to me. So um, she was perfectly cool with it. But again, that's not something you're always going to find. I mean, it, it's just a lot of these booths now, these flea market booths, they want, they want to charge more money. They want to, they really want to go on the eBay and, and see what the highest price is and then, and then try and sell it to you that in the store. Um, so anyways, what I'm getting at is it's just, in, you know, in today's world in 2023, it's just really, really getting harder and harder and harder to find this stuff. And as I said in a previous video, and in fact, I think I, I, it was, uh, the immortal John Hancock that said it, a lot of this stuff is starting to disappear. Uh, which is a shame. I mean, it's it's either disappearing by ending up in people's collections like mine, or just who knows where vanishing, and uh, that's it. That's the end of the line. Anyways, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you and throw some uh, topics out there uh, just to get a discussion going. I always like to hear what you have to say. Throw some comments down below. Hope you subscribe, and we'll talk to you later.